Thank you for downloading from Ravi Zacharias International Ministries. Support for this podcast comes from your generous gifts and donations. You can find out more about Ravi Zacharias and the team at www.rzim.org. Jesus Christ did not come into this world to give the mind new information about God or to open up new mystical experiences of God or to tell us new ways of doing things for God. Jesus Christ came into this world as God himself. Did Jesus Christ come into the world as God? If so, then everything Christ did and all that he said deserves close inspection. Find out why from RZIM itinerant team member Michael Ramsden as he fills in for Ravi Zacharias today on Just Thinking. Today on Just Thinking, we'll look at the person of Jesus Christ. What did he do on earth? And why is it important? How is he different from men who founded other major religions like Buddhism and Islam? Stay tuned and discover the unique place Christ holds in history and in our lives. And now here's RZIM UK Director Michael Ramsden with his message called, Who Am I? Coming into relationship with Christ is not an experience in life. It is the moment of life itself. Systems rooted in doing the pragmatical, do these things, live this way. At one point in John 6, 28, the disciples came to Jesus and said, what must we do to do the works God requires? They phrase a question to him in the plural. Jesus replies in the singular. The work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. And then they look at him and they say, wait a minute, our forefathers ate manna in the desert. God sent them bread from heaven. What are you going to do? What miracle are you going to perform to convince us? And Jesus looked at them and said, I am the bread of life. I am. You know, in asking him how to live, they were looking for a path to truth. In asking him what to do, they were looking for a way of life. Jesus looked at them and he said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. I am. All of Christian revelation is summed up in the person of Jesus Christ. Listen to me very carefully, please. You can take any founder out of his religion, and the religion normally remains intact. If you were speaking to an Islamic theologian this evening, and you were to say to him, could God have given his revelation to anyone, or did God have to use Muhammad? The answer would be, no, God could have chosen anyone. Muhammad is the one we believe that God has chosen. If you were speaking to a Buddhist... You could say to them, did this revelation have to come to Buddha, or could it have been anyone else? And the answer was no, it could have been anyone else. Historically, it was Buddha. That's why it's called Buddhism. But if his name was John, it would be called Johnism. You can take any founder out of his religion, and the religious system remains intact, because the teaching about what to think, the instructions about how to live, okay, and the process of what to do are all contained in there. You cannot take Christ out of Christian. If you take Christ out of Christian, you are left with the letters I-A-N, and Ian cannot help you. (laughs) Jesus Christ did not come into this world to give the mind new information about God, or to open up new mystical experiences of God, or to tell us new ways of doing things for God. Jesus Christ came into this world as God himself. He is the substance of his own revelation. That is why Jesus said, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. If you have seen me, you have seen God. In John chapter 14, let me read some very well-known words to you. This is what Jesus says. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except 
through me. If you knew me, you would know my father as well. From now on, you do know him and you have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the father and that will be enough for us. And Jesus answered, don't you know me, Philip, even after I've been with you such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I say to you are not my own. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing this work. Believe me when I say I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the miracles themselves. Jesus came into this world and said, if you want to know what God is like, look at me. The revelation of who God is is found in the person of Christ. Not in an abstraction of language or anything else, but in a person. At one point, Jesus turned to a group of religious people and he said to them, you read and study these scriptures, but these are the scriptures that talk about me. How could you not recognize me? You know, the question, who am I, is an essential question. And it demands an essential answer. The trouble with asking the question, who am I, is that we're scared about it. Because if we're honest, we don't like the answer to the question, who am I? Because we're not happy with maybe what we can see. All of us have things to hide. Most of us would have to admit that we're not happy with who we are. You know the story of a couple who went away on holiday. They left their keys with their neighbors and they said, could you please watch over the house while we're gone? So the couple, you know, they go away. They're away for a couple of weeks. This other couple, they promise to water the plants. They forget about looking after the house and everything else like that. It's almost two weeks to come back. They suddenly remember. They think, hey, we should go around, just check everything's okay. So they take their dog. They go to their neighbor's house. They let the dog out in the back garden. And there they are. They're just in. They water the plants in the kitchen and whatever. Okay, and all of a sudden, their dog comes in from the backyard, and he's got a dead rabbit in his mouth. And they look at the rabbit, and they suddenly think, our next-door neighbors have a pet rabbit. They look out into the backyard. Sure enough, the hutch is empty. So they pull this dead rabbit out of the dog's mouth. It's got blood on it. It's dirty. It looks like it's been dragged through who knows what. Okay, they put it under the tap. They sort of wash it off. They stick the fur back on that's falling off. You know, they sort of make it as wide as they can. They blow dry it, and they stick it back in the hutch. Yeah, they go back home. A few hours later, the neighbors arrive and, you know, they come into the house and they're sitting outside on their back porch and they hear their neighbors open the the door into their backyard and they suddenly hear this scream. Anyway, two minutes later, the neighbors come around and they knock on the door. Yeah, did you have a nice holiday? Yeah, great, thank you. While we were away, did anything unusual happen in our backyard? And this couple say, no. Why do you ask? And they said, well, this is the strangest thing. Just before we went on holiday, our rabbit died and we buried him in the backyard. (laughs) All of us have done things that we shouldn't have done. All of us have things about us that we wouldn't like anybody else to see. The reason why the question, who am I, is a scary question, is it's an essential question. It's a question that reveals something about our very hearts. And if we were honest, most of us don't want to have stuff revealed at that kind of level about us. I don't know if any of you have heard of a guy called Aristotle. You wouldn't have read about him in the papers recently because he died a few thousand years ago. Um, He was a Greek philosopher. And this guy, Aristotle, tried to create the perfect country. And after trying to speculate, in a purely speculative way, what would it take to create the perfect country, he asked himself a very interesting question. And he asked himself this question about 600 years before Jesus Christ was born. And he says, having tried to create the perfect country, what would happen if a man came into that country who was so perfect he was considered to be a god amongst men? It's an interesting question, isn't it? Do you know what Aristotle concluded? He said, if such a person arrived who was so perfect, they were a god amongst men, they would have to be killed. Because the very perfection of their life would reveal the bankruptcy in the life of everybody else around them. When Mary Shelley wrote a book, Frankenstein, Mary Shelley was no Christian by any stretch of the imagination. But she wrote a book called Frankenstein. Most of you may have seen it and there have been a couple of films. But if you read the book, Frankenstein isn't the monster. In the book, Frankenstein is the doctor who creates a monster. And as a matter of fact, he doesn't create a monster. Dr. Frankenstein creates a perfectly benign and peaceful being. And the more this, mon- this creation of Dr. Frankenstein observes human behavior, and the more the monster copies human behavior, the more evil he becomes. Eventually, the monster confronts his creator. And as they stand talking to each other, the monster says, and remember, this book was written by a non-Christian. The monster says to his creator, he says, when I came into this world, I couldn't understand why human beings needed governments or laws or police. 
He says, but as I began to observe your behavior and read your history, my wonder ceased and I turned away in disgust and loathing. Human beings are capable of such kindness and goodness. They're also capable of such viciousness and baseness. How is that possible? He said, in the human being is everything that's beautiful, noble, and godlike. But at the same time, you have such a capacity for evil. And then the monster says this, all I can conclude is this. You were created in the image of a perfect being and you've fallen away from it. And that's exactly what the Bible has to say. The reason why the question, who am I, bothers us is because it's an essential question. It asks questions about our heart, which if we are honest, we are not happy with. And it doesn't matter what you do, it doesn't matter what patterns of thought you master, and it doesn't matter what experiences you have, you can never change yourself. It's impossible. No one can change themselves. Have you noticed that? It's impossible. It doesn't matter how hard you try. But if you look at any secular system of counseling or even other religious systems, they'll say, look, you're not happy with who you are. But what you need to do is you need to do certain things, think certain things, have certain experiences. You do all of that, you'll eventually become the person that God wants you to be and the person that you want to be. Jesus Christ came into this world and he did something completely different. Jesus came into this world and he offered to start where everybody else wanted to finish. Jesus said, if anyone comes to me, they are a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. Someone came to Jesus at one point and said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said, you must be born again. Literally, your very being must be taken, changed. You must be born anew a second time. Have you ever thought about that? The reason why Jesus Christ is unique is he is offering to do something that no one else has ever even thought about. It may be impossible to change yourself, but Jesus Christ can change anyone who desires to be different. Was today's program beneficial? If you think it was, why not ask for the complete message from this week entitled, Who Am I? It's easy to order the CD. Just call 1-800-448-6766. Again, the number is 1-800-448-6766. Or go online to our website at rzim.org. You can also write to RZIM at Post Office Box 921-939, Norcross, Georgia, 30010. Just Thinking is a listener-supported radio presentation of Robbie Zacharias International Ministries. Tune in tomorrow for more spiritual insight from Michael Ramsden. Until then, keep thinking. Have you ever been put in the uncomfortable position of giving reasons for your faith? If you're a college student, there's a good chance a professor has ridiculed your beliefs in front of the entire class, posing difficult questions that you've had trouble answering. Hi, I'm Nathan Zacharias, and I host an RZIM interactive youth apologetics series called Ask. Ask is divided into four sections, origin, meaning, morality, and destiny. And the reason we're looking at these four topics is because every worldview must answer them. Where do we come from? Origin. Why are we here? Meaning. What's right and what's wrong? Morality. And where are we going? Our destiny. Whether you're in class or just talking to your friends about serious questions, part of what we want to do with this series is give you a better idea of how to answer somebody who asks you tough questions about your beliefs. We created Ask to show the importance of forming a worldview that actually makes sense and matches reality. A worldview is just that. It's a way of viewing the world, a complete way of looking at life and coming to terms with why things are the way they are. So ask, because your questions matter. You'll find Ask online at www.rzim.org.